Okay, let's get into the stock market now. Okay, for this week in the market recap, I'm going to do something a little bit different because of the nature of some of the stocks that I'm going to be talking about, and they're not even specifically stocks, so there's a spoiler spoiler alert for you. So there is a battle brewing, and I'm looking forward to the competition here. I found this week a handful of ETFs that are all vying in the autonomous connected electric vehicle space. And I want to highlight the five that I've come across so far. Now, again, this is a horse race, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be something that all of these ETFs are going to be vying for your money. And look, when you look at these ETFs, a lot of their top 10 holdings, which I'm going to go over with you, a lot of the top 10 holdings are pretty similar across the board. If anything, what's going to differentiate these ETFs are essentially what their stated objectives are. And again, that's what I'm going to be doing a lot of reading here for you. So I'm fairly new to all of these ETFs, so bear with me as I go through these, but these will definitely be some uh, some funds that I will be following throughout the coming years as they attempt to invest money into the entire connected autonomous electric vehicle space in order to find unicorns, right? I mean, again, that's kind of the whole free market aspect about the capital markets, ETFs, stocks, companies going public, all those kinds of things, right? They're trying to find solutions to problems that are out there. And ETFs are one way of funding projects through massive capital investments. Okay, so first one, stock symbol, IDRV, iShares Self-Driving EV and Tech ETF. Here is their stated objective. The investment seeks to track the investment results of the New York Stock Exchange FactSet Global Autonomous Driving and Electric Vehicle Index. So this was one thing that I was looking into that there's there's a lot of these ETFs are using some index that's out there that is tracking, you know, the particular industry. In this case, the ETF of iDrive is following the New York Stock Exchange FactSet Global Robotics and Artificial Intelligence Index. Now, the one thing I think that is very unique about this particular index is that it seems to be more on where are the locations of this of the companies and the technology where are they and based on where they are this ETF will then look to make those investments based on their geographic location so that was actually kind of interesting about this particular ETF another ETF smart ETFs smart transportation and technology ETF symbol M O T O these names are freaking horrible. So Moto's stated objective, prospectus stated objectives. The investment seeks long-term capital appreciation. The fund will invest in publicly traded equity securities of domestic or foreign companies that are involved in the development and production of products or services for smart transportation, including safer, cleaner, or connected vehicles. So, this is an interesting one here too, MOTO. And just as a teaser, I did reach out to MOTO and they may be potentially on the show. So that's going to be great to hear about their investment strategy. But nonetheless, this is an interesting one because they are investing in the companies that are going to be involved in public transit, public transportation, mobility projects. Okay. When I look at uh, this ETF, I think about companies like Via, you know, a prior guest on the show, Ch uh, Chase Frazier of Frazier McCones Capital. As a matter of fact, actually they changed their name. They're called uh, First Movers 
first movers capital. Had him on the show a while ago, and he was one of the VCs that's been part of VIA for some time. And so VIA is making some very big headways within a lot of municipalities and deploying their transportation as a service. So another company, and again, I had the co-founder, and I think he's the COO, Sam Baker of Wonder Mobility, right? These are both Wonder Mobility and Via are companies that operate in the transportation as a service space. And so this particular ETF is going to be looking at those. Now, those two companies, unfortunately, are not on the uh, public markets. They're not, in, they're not available to trade. Although I'll give you a spoiler alert. I'll give you a, my, I'll give you my forecast here. Via is a company that I can see eventually going public. You heard it here first. And as a matter of fact, that's one thing I actually want to press a little bit more and try to find out if that is indeed a strategy of Via to grow and expand is to eventually go public. That's going to be very, very interesting. Okay. Moto, M-O-T-O, this ETF, again, they're going to be investing spe- more into equities that are involved with smart transportation, transportation as a service. Another ETF, Spider S&P Kensho Smart Mobility ETF. Symbol H-A-I-L, HAIL. The objective, this investment seeks to provide investment results that before fees and expenses correspond generally to the total return performance of the S&P Kensho Smart Transportation Index. Again, this goes back to what I was saying about the iDrive ETF. They're using an index to base, base a lot of their investment strategies. And so in this case, Hale, H-I-H-A-I-L, is basing their investments off of the index, the S&P Kensho Smart Transportation Index. From what I gather with this S&P Kensho Smart Transportation Index, it is similar to what companies the Moto ETF is investing in, that being transportation as a service providers and technology. The one difference with S&P can show smart transportation that I can presume is that they also have a focus on drones and also, as it says here, that's Again, they're investing in companies in the S&P Kensho Drones Index with a focus on civilian and commercial applications. So to me, this would also suggest that they're not just looking to stay at ground level. They're looking to go above ground. And I would almost presume then that based on the language of civilian and commercial applications, these are probably some prior naval engineers, you know, a combination of people that were engineers, a combination of folks who were trained as an engineer, but also then worked in the Navy, in the Air Force, something of that nature. So that is the H-A-I-L, HAIL ETF. The last two, the last two are a bit in competition of one another. Again, that's why this is going to be an interesting horse race of these ETFs. So the fourth ETF is DRIV, symbol is DRIV. I'm going to call this DRIVE. The name of the ETF is Global X Autonomous and Electric Vehicles ETF. The investment seeks to provide investment results that correspond generally to the price and yield performance of the Sole Active Autonomous and Electric Vehicles Index. All right, so this is the index that Drive is going to be is basing their investments on. And so what is the Sole Active Autonomous and Electric Vehicle Index? Let me read here some more. The Sole Active Autonomous and Electric Vehicles Index tracks the price movements in shares of companies which are or are expected to be in the near future active in the electric vehicles and autonomous driving segments. 
So this one is a little bit more narrowly focused. But what's interesting is a lot of these ETFs, I believe all of these ETFs, are right within the are, are within very close proximity of one another in terms of total net assets. I think they're all somewhere around 40 million. I could be wrong on that one. I'll double check that. The last one is CARS, K-A-R-S, not to be mistaken for K-A-R, car auction services. This has an S at the end, K-A-R-S, CARS, stands for Crane Shares Electric Vehicles and Future Mobility. The investment seeks to provide investment results that correspond generally to the price and yield performance of the sole active electric vehicles and future mobility index. Again, same index that Drive is basing their investments on. So hopefully you can see the commonalities of these ETFs and what they're trying to do to provide investments in the connected autonomous and electric vehicle space that would benefit both private that would both benefit the private sector as well as the public sector and just as a very quick listing of some of the companies that these are all that that these ETFs are investing in and it's not going to be so outrageous to hear which companies these are you could probably guess the first one, the one of the, you know, it seems like this company is, it, 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 it contains most of the investments of these ETFs, and that is Tesla. All companies, all these ETFs, I mean, um, do share some sort of investment or have some sort of investment with Tesla. Other automakers that you would see on here, Toyota, Neo, the Chinese automaker, Neo. General Motors is also on here, BMW, and that would comprise all the automakers. Now, again, that I'm just mentioning the automakers that are listed in the top 10 holdings of these ETFs as of today. So that could change later on. Other types of companies that, are, that these ETFs are invested in, NVIDIA, Qualcomm, a lot of the semiconductor. So NVIDIA, Qualcomm, Advanced Micro Devices, Microsoft, Taiwan Semiconductor Manufacturing, On Semiconductor Corporation, Texas Instruments, Cisco. So those would be some of the semiconductor and just software companies that are that these ETFs hold investments in. And so if you do take a look at where their share prices are, and especially if you were to look at it year to date, you know, year to date, they are all up. Correction, not all of them. It looks like Drive is the only one. Maybe, wait, maybe there's one more. No, Drive is the only one that is down for the year. That also has been around for quite some time. The Drive ETF has been around since it looks like early 2000s, maybe even prior to 2000. A lot of these other ETFs, from what I can see, yeah, are within the last couple of years. So the Drive ETF is probably going to be a very difficult one to come from behind and be declared a, a winner in this race of these ETFs. Okay, so those were some of the ETFs that I'm gonna be following closely, and I hope to have some of those investment managers on the show to talk about what they see going on in the connected autonomous and electric vehicle space. So stay tuned for that. Thanks for tuning in to the Friday Rundown on Wisco Weekly. Have a good weekend, and I'll be back next week. Hey, listeners, thanks for tuning into this episode of the Friday Rundown on Wisco Weekly. If you're enjoying the show, please do rate and review on Apple Podcasts. 
And also, please stick around and listen to my fembot, Fiona. Wisco Weekly is providing this information for educational purposes only. We are not providing legal, accounting, or financial advisory services, and this is not a solicitation or recommendation to buy or sell any stocks, options, or other financial instruments or investments. Examples that address specific assets, stocks, options or other financial instrument transactions are for illustrative purposes only and may not represent specific trades or transactions that we have conducted. In fact, we may use examples that are different or the opposite of transactions we have conducted or positions we hold. This site and any information or training therein is also not intended as a solicitation for any future relationship, business or otherwise between the members or participants and the moderators. No express or implied warranties are being made with respect to these services and products. All investing and trading in the securities market involves risk. Any decisions to place trades in the financial markets, including trading in stock or options or other financial instruments, is a personal decision that should only be made after thorough research, including a personal risk and financial assessment, and the engagement of professional assistance to the extent you believe necessary.